Hello and welcome to my video presentation. In this DVD, you will learn how to practice and integrate positive change into your life. Healing is more than physical. It encompasses the physical, emotional and spiritual aspects, touching every part of your life. First, I will start with a brief history. At a young age, I experienced many paranormal activities, such as telekinesis, telepathy and remote viewing. I discovered energy healing and for the last eight years I have been drawn to healing. The focus of my work is helping others achieve self-empowerment. In my first book, Dream Healer, I share my healing gift, encouraging others to express their experiences and gifts. The publicity surrounding the release of Dream Healer and a number of notable healings sparked an enormous interest, including an overwhelming number of requests for healing. I saw firsthand the desperate need for healing of body, mind, and spirit. I was thrilled to discover that my healing abilities were effective with groups as well as individuals. I could merge the auras of a group into one coherent frequency to effectively orchestrate these group healings. For several years, I have held these workshops, helping thousands of people in this process. In these workshops, I merged the latest cutting edge science with the mystical traditions of my Aboriginal forefathers, as I am part Native American. I have embraced their wisdom about subtle energies and combined my channeled insights with the most recent scientific information in molecular biology. In addition to my own workshops, I have had the honor of presenting my material about intentional healing jointly with several of the most forward thinkers in this field. It was a rewarding experience to combine and integrate cutting edge quantum physics the latest research in biology, and the psychology of consciousness with group energy sessions. I am grateful to have learned from such dedicated and open-minded individuals. What I have learned is that each and every one of us naturally possesses healing capacity. We just need some simple directions as how to maximize our awareness of it and focus our intentions to guide it. This joining of science and ancient wisdom links the scientists and the mystic as one. In this DVD, you will learn how to examine and change your perception to create a more optimistic reality. You will gain confidence in customizing your visualizations for your particular goals. Learn to trust the process of allowing your own creative inner guidance to lead you. Experience self-empowerment as you transform your reality with the power of your intentions. All of the techniques and visualizations in this DVD are designed to make you feel more comfortable as you explore and practice what works most effectively for you. Becoming comfortable with yourself is the most important step towards self-empowerment. Trust yourself on your way forward. This is what Healing with Intentions is all about. Enjoy the journey. Now let's get started. Medical knowledge is constantly changing, however the application of this knowledge often lags behind. Often physicians use the treatments they have always used and resist change. It is commonly thought that if most physicians do something a certain way, it must work. Change that contradicts the present dogma is often rejected. A classic example is Dr. Semmelweis, who in 1847 observed that a large percentage of women were dying in childbirth from fever. He proposed that doctors should wash their hands and instruments prior to delivery. This would reduce infection rates. The other physicians became so enraged by his outrageous theory that Semmelweis lost his teaching privileges and professorship. This story has a sad ending, as five years later he died in a public insane asylum at the age of 47. Semmelweis's theory was considered superstitious because this was prior to Louis Pasteur's germ theory. There was no known mechanism at this point in time that would explain the transfer of disease from one patient to another by using a dirty instrument. Of course this is now common sense 
and no surgeon would use a dirty instrument during surgery. This dramatic paradigm shift took place only 150 years ago. More recently, there was another medical paradigm shift regarding peptic ulcers. For decades, it was thought that excess stomach acid was the cause of peptic ulcers. 30 years ago, two scientists first suggested that peptic ulcer disease is caused by a bacterium that thrives in acidic environments, such as the stomach. The biggest challenge was convincing the medical community that peptic ulcers were not caused by excess stomach acid. For years, the medical community and pharmaceutical industry refused to change their beliefs. It was not accepted until the financial motives for disputing this medical evidence disappeared. During this intervening time, doctors resisted assimilating this new evidence into patient treatment. Many patients suffered unnecessarily through the use of ineffective treatments. When patents for acid-reducing drugs expired, this bacterium was accepted as the cause of peptic ulcers. There have been countless paradigm shifts over the past hundred years, and we are currently on the verge of another paradigm shift. There is an overwhelming amount of evidence showing that intentions are a powerful healing tool. The medical community is slow to accept these concepts as the mechanism is poorly understood. It will not be long until the power of intention is commonly utilized in the medical community. It is important to keep an open mind. If history has taught us anything, it is that ideas change. Over and over we have seen ideas resisted and then accepted as common knowledge. Traditional medicine is restricted within its historical and cultural limitations. Use your thoughts and your intentions to your advantage, as this is a powerful healing tool that we all possess. Humans have always sought to understand the origin of the universe. Ever since man first stared at the stars above, these questions have persisted. Discussing the origin of the universe may seem quite unrelated to healing. These two topics, however, are strongly linked. The origin of the universe helps to explain the interconnections between everything in the universe. The Big Bang occurred more than 13 billion years ago. This massive explosion of energy generated all of the matter in the universe. The explosion initiated from a singularity. In other words, there was one energy that initiated the Big Bang. Everything in the universe originated from one common energy. Consequently, everything in the universe shares a common connection. As living organisms, we also share another connection to each other. All life on Earth originated from one common ancestor. There is an overwhelming amount of molecular evidence supporting this. Due to this common ancestor that all life shares, we as living beings have shared characteristics and consequently we share a strong interconnection to each other. The reason that this interconnection is significant is that everything that we do affects everything in the entire universe. Our intentions can influence anything in the universe by utilizing this interconnection. It may be difficult to visualize, but due to this interconnection, distance is not a factor. Regardless of your location, you are not only connected to all life, but to everything in the universe as well. It is important to keep this in mind when trying to focus your intentions. There truly is no limit to what you can do with your intentions you are directly connected to everything in the universe. If you are seeking the answer to something, don't be afraid to try to connect to the answer. The answer to every question is out there. Whether you are aware of it or not, you are already connected to it. The purpose of this segment is to emphasize that your every thought resonates throughout the entire universe, influencing things far beyond your conscious awareness. 
The only limits that you have are the limits that you have set for yourself in your own mind. Before I talk about the biology of healing, I will first review some basic concepts in biology. DNA is in every cell in every living organism on Earth, which serves as a template for reproduction. Information is stored in DNA based on the sequence of nucleotides. These nucleotides are arranged in a specific order, and this order codes for information in a similar fashion to how letters form a sentence. DNA has virtually no metabolic function in the cell. The proteins in the cell carry out all of the chemical reactions that are essential for life. The proteins are generated from DNA. The chemical reactions in the cell depend on the activity of proteins and the rate of their production. A gene is a sequence of DNA that codes for the production of a protein. The rate of protein production depends on how much that gene is expressed. In other words, there are mechanisms that determine how much each gene is turned on. The amount that each gene is turned on is what is physiologically relevant rather than the DNA itself. The mechanisms that regulate the expression of genes are incredibly sensitive to the environment. The slightest change in environment results in huge biochemical changes within the cell. Your intentions directly influence the cellular environment, both chemically and energetically. This influences literally every aspect of cell metabolism. Once proteins are generated, they are transported to the respective locations in the cell where they then catalyze a variety of important chemical reactions. The activity level of proteins is carefully regulated to maintain a constant environment in the cell. This balancing of the cellular environment is referred to as homeostasis. Life depends on the cell's ability to maintain homeostasis. The activity of these proteins is largely determined by the structure of the protein. The structure is incredibly dynamic and sensitive to environmental changes. This allows the activity of these proteins to be tightly regulated. One of the most fundamental concepts in protein structure and function is that the slightest change in a protein structure can result in that protein going from 100% activity to 0%. There are tens of thousands of different proteins in every cell. Each protein has a unique purpose and each protein is also uniquely sensitive to different environmental conditions. There are a number of environmental conditions in the cell that influence protein structure, such as temperature, chemical environment, interaction with other proteins, and light. All of these environmental conditions are directly influenced by the way that you think about your environment. Your perception of your environment is passed down to your cells. Your perception of your environment consequently has an enormous impact on cellular events and this knowledge is very empowering. Every thought that you make, whether you are aware of it or not, whether you like it or not, has a direct impact on chemical events in your body. This knowledge should be used to your advantage. Your eyes, ears, sense of smell and touch all provide information to the nervous system. The purpose of your nervous system is to provide sensory input and synchronize activities throughout your entire body. This coordinates metabolic activity in all of your cells to better suit the new environment. Your intentions paint a picture of your environment for the nervous system to respond to. An obvious example is when you are about to jump off of a really high diving board into a pool. By just thinking about jumping, your heart rate increases, blood flow to your muscles increases, 
and numerous other important biochemical processes are initiated by simply anticipating the jump. You automatically take a deep breath and hold it just before you enter the water. All of these chemical and physical changes take place due to your intentions about the environment. The exact same thing happens when you are mentally preparing your body to fight off a disease. Your cells respond exactly the same way to your intentions. By mentally focusing on your health issue, your cells become prepared to fight the illness and as a consequence, they are more effective at doing so. Take advantage of this connection and get your cells focused on your goals. Energy exercises. When trying to work with energy, it is always helpful to see and feel what you are working with. The following exercises will help you develop your skills in feeling and seeing your own energy. The energy is very easy to see and feel, and the more you practice these techniques, the easier it will get. Feeling your energy. First, gently rub your palms together in a circular motion. This helps to rub off the dead skin cells and increase the sensitivity to energy in your hands. Now put your palms several inches apart and push them together as hard as you can without actually moving them. You can try rotating your hands in a circular motion and spread your hands a varying distance apart and you will feel the same resistance. It is almost like two magnets that are opposing each other. With practice, you will be able to increase the distance as you become more sensitive to your own energy. This is a great exercise to do before working with someone's aura. Seeing your energy. Seeing your own subtle energy is an amazing experience and the more that you practice this, the easier it becomes. Against a dark background, hold your hands in front of you with your fingertips pointing to each other. I want you to move your fingers slowly up and down and you will see this hazy distortion or this line that moves with the movement of your fingers. You can increase the distance you can make it a shorter distance and try playing around with different lighting conditions and different background colors. Sometimes people even find that if they just use one eye when doing this exercise that it's actually easier to see the energy. Play around with this and you'll find that this energy is not hard to see at all. With more practice the energy flow will look more and more defined. How to see a person's aura. The more you practice the exercise of seeing the energy between your fingers, the easier this aura exercise becomes. The lighting conditions for this exercise should be experimented with, just like seeing the energy. Look past the person whose aura you want to see. Concentrate on an area about two inches above their shoulders or their head. And just relax, look past them. Don't strain your eyes trying to see it. The aura may appear as a faint emanation surrounding the person. Some people describe this similar to heat waves, others as a misty fog. With practice you will eventually see the flowing colors of the aura. Keep practicing. Once you see the energy it is a very empowering experience. At this point, it should be clear that our intentions influence literally every cellular function. We should all use our intentions to positively impact our health. 
So how can we use our intentions to effectively influence our health? Visualizations are an effective tool to focus your intentions on the problem at hand. These techniques are mental exercises to harness the power of your intentions. Visualizations are a tool that can be used in conjunction with any medical treatment. Visualizations align your intentions and thought patterns with your healing objective. Set what you desire in your conscious mind and then let your subconscious mind recreate these intentions. Visualizations allow you to influence your subconscious mind. Doing these visualizations helps to strengthen neural pathways which are beneficial to you. This gets your cells focused on the problem. For example, if you have a headache, your intention is to be pain free. A visualization would be sending step by step instructions to your body as to how this problem can be approached. Visualize the blood vessels in the area of pain opening and allowing unrestricted blood flow. Visualize calming ripples of energy emanating from the area. Imagine every muscle in that area being totally relaxed. Through your focused intentions, you can speed up the healing process by directing your immune system to the area of concern. State your goals clearly and concisely as possible. If you have a clear picture of your goals, then it is much easier for your cells to move in the direction of that goal. Let's go through the basic steps of a visualization. There are three steps for creating an anatomically accurate visualization. These steps can be applied to a visualization for any illness. Regardless of what the problem is, you use these same three basic steps to design a visualization routine. The first step is acquainting yourself with the area of concern using an anatomy book or internet sources. Take charge and learn everything there is to know about your health challenge. The more you understand about the process of regaining your wellness, the more accurate your visualizations will become. Your goal is to activate your own healing mechanisms as effectively as possible. The second step is understanding the different mechanisms for the body to heal itself. You do not have to be an expert, but it helps to have a picture in your mind as to how the body approaches fixing such a problem. The third and final step is understanding what the healed problem looks like. Once again, if you have a clear picture of your goals, then it is much easier for your cells to move in the direction of that goal. If pain is the issue, see yourself now as pain free. If mobility is your challenge, visualize doing an activity that you love effortlessly with ease. So once again, the three basic steps are understanding the problem, knowing what the perfectly healed area looks like, and using the mechanisms that the body has to heal the problem, to build from where you are now to where you want to get to. The most important thing is at the end of this visualization, there is no thought of there ever being a problem. The moment that a negative thought creeps in saying that nothing has changed, start that part of the visualization over again. This essentially trains your subconscious mind to be more positive. Picture the body healed and functioning properly. Watch the entire area working flawlessly with no sign of there ever being a problem. The question I am most frequently asked in my workshops is, what visualization should I do for a specific ailment? It is important to remember that you know better than anyone else what visualization is effective for you. Design a visualization routine that is ideal for you. A visualization routine that works well for one person may not be so effective for another. Everyone has a unique set of life experiences and this results in some visualizations resonating more with some people than others. Integrate your hobbies and passions into your visualizations to make them more meaningful to you. For instance, 
If you are a musician, then use healing sounds and vibrations to focus on the problem. This is how you customize visualizations for you. It may be helpful to find a general visualization on this DVD or my previous one, which most closely corresponds with your health challenge. You can customize or modify these visualizations in any way to better suit your particular problem. You can use as few or as many of the visualizations as you want. I recommend choosing several of the general visualizations and experiment with them while focusing on the problem area. The reason it helps to have several different visualizations is that if you try using the same one, you will find that your mind gets distracted very quickly. I like to visualize using one technique, such as lightning bolts, until I feel my mind starting to drift. Then I shift my focus to another technique, such as fire. This keeps the mind occupied. The purpose of these visualizations is to get the body focused on the problem at hand. If you do the visualizations to the point of boredom, then this is not an effective way of focusing your cells. You do these visualizations for as long as you can stay focused. If that is only for a couple minutes, that's fine. The more you practice, the easier it will get. The best time to do these visualizations is just before you go to bed. At this point in the day, you are in a more relaxed state and therefore you are closer to the subconscious mind. Doing visualizations before bedtime creates optimum conditions for change. Set your intentions before you go to sleep and let your subconscious sleep state continue this thought pattern for the duration of your sleep. Ideally, we want to have vivid dreams of these positive visualizations. Make it a habit. Every night before you go to bed, put aside several minutes to relax, clear your mind, and focus on the positive things that you want to change in your life. It does not necessarily have to be health related. It can be focused on how you want your next day to go. Visualize the perfect next day. Find your own comfortable place to do your visualizations. Many people like to visualize in a quiet, dark room. Most people find that it is much easier to visualize with their eyes closed. It is very important, however, for me to emphasize that there are no rules set in stone about visualizing. It is truly whatever works well for you. You are a unique individual, and therefore, you respond to energy in a unique way. Customize unique techniques for yourself. Do not worry about whether or not you are doing the visualizations right. This is a waste of energy. You do not have to be seeing things vividly for these visualizations to work. Some people naturally see things very vividly, but most do not. If you have the constant focused intent, then it is happening. You do not have to be clearly seeing fire in your mind to visualize fire burning in a particular region of your body. A picture is worth a thousand words, but you can use whatever your most dominant sense is to your advantage when visualizing. The constant focused intent is more than sufficient, and with practice you will start to see and feel the visualizations more strongly. Change them and mix it up so that you look forward to doing them. This should be an enjoyable experience as brain stimulating exercises are more effective if you are motivated. Some people do visualizations many times a day. Doing them once a day just before you go to sleep is more than sufficient for most people. See yourself in the state of wellness you want to achieve. Do this in as much detail as you can. This is your personal goal, your dream. See yourself doing what you will do in this state of wellness. Feel how it will feel in this state. Hear the sounds that you will hear around you. Smell the air. Do this every day. Make time for it and look forward to spending this time with yourself every day. 
In health issues, your own expectation is a major determining factor in your recovery. As an optimist, you have a better chance of recovery because you expect to recover. And guess what? You do influence biochemical events according to your intentions. All of the visualizations in this DVD are designed to make you feel more comfortable as you explore and practice what works most effectively for you. Becoming comfortable with yourself is the most important step towards self-empowerment. Trust yourself on your way forward. This is what healing with intentions is all about. You now have the tools to effectively use your intentions to your advantage. Healing others. Healing others is an important aspect of healing ourselves. In this section, you will learn how you can focus your healing energy on another person. These techniques can be used anytime, as often as you like. Many people find that the workshop is the ideal environment to use these healing techniques. When you use energy to heal someone, it helps to be able to mentally visualize that person. Concentrate on every little detail about them. Remember their eye color, wrinkles, scars, hairstyle, and so on. Many find it helpful to have a photograph of the person they are working on, even if it is someone they know very well. You may also find it helpful to have with you an object that connects you to the person that you're working with. For instance, their favorite hat. Essentially, it is the same as if you were working on yourself except that your intentions are being directed to another person. You carry out the visualizations the same way as if you were working on yourself, except your focus is on this other person. Visualize the problem being resolved using the same three visualization steps outlined earlier on this DVD. With practice, feeling this connection becomes more natural. Once again, you do not have to be seeing vivid images for this to be working. If you have that constant focused intent, then it is working. Plan this healing connection with the other person if it's possible. Discuss what time you'll be sending your intentions. Ask them to visualize at this same time with you. Their intentions are, after all, the most powerful influence on their own health. Group healings. This section prepares you to participate in Dream Healer workshops. I have received thousands of requests for individual treatments. As I was trying to make sense of my healing gift, I made an incredibly useful discovery. I discovered that it is possible to do healings on large groups of people at the same time, and these treatments are very effective. For the last eight years, I have held numerous workshops across North America, which include group treatments. My intention is to help as many people as I possibly can while learning in the process. The main point that I emphasize in these workshops is that you have the ability to improve your own health. I help you manage your own health issues rather than solve your issues for you. This is self-empowerment knowing that you can influence your own health. The collective energy of these group sessions is powerful. Your participation in the group healings provides a jump start on your healing journey. Once you have experienced this energetic connection, you will recall what it feels like as you continue with your healing visualizations. You will gain an unforgettable lifelong skill. The goal at every group healing is to synchronize the energy of every individual in the group together as one. There are two simple steps that when carried out help to get the energy of the group working as one. The first step is aura expansion and the second step is aura merging. When you are doing healings on yourself 
somewhere else in a non-group setting, you may skip this step if you like. Step 1. Expanding your aura. Visualize tree roots branching out from your feet. These roots branch out to more roots until the entire energy of the earth is engulfed in your roots. Pull in the earth's infinite energy into you. Once you are saturated with this energy, there is so much energy radiating from yourself that you cannot even look at your own arm. It's like looking at the sun. At the end of this, you see your aura expand. These are not rules set in stone. They are simply tools that other people have found to be effective. These energies are very easily influenced by your intentions. It does not matter which visualization you do, as long as your intention is to expand your aura. Once again, do not be discouraged if you are not seeing vivid images in front of you. As long as you have the constant, focused intent, it is happening. Step 2. Joining your aura with those around you. After expanding your auras, the focus shifts to merging the auras together. Visualize your aura merging with the auras of those around you, just as two bubbles in a bathtub merge into one larger bubble, until there are no divisions between individual auras. The best way to finish this visualization is going to a bird's eye view of the room and seeing one large aura that fills the room. Do not worry about picking up negative energy from others in the group. You must get away from thinking about energy in such physical terms. The only energy that moves is the energy that you intend to move. Now the group is merged as one. This is the same oneness that is evident on a smaller scale within each of us. Your body is composed of trillions of cells and every cell is a distinct living entity. These cells are all resonating harmoniously together to form a complete and uniform aura. Just as the auras of each cell within us merge together for our own benefit, each of our auras can be connected to benefit all within the group. When I connect to a group, I bombard the group with as much energy as possible. My experience during a group treatment is very similar to that of an individual treatment. During any treatment, I go into a very deep trance and everything in the room goes dark. Then I begin to see images in front of me. What I am physically doing at this point is moving my arms and hands around. I then change these images that I'm seeing in front of me to a more healthy state. The energy seems to have an intelligence of its own and it goes where it is needed. It's not just the energy that I'm working with. It is also the energy of the entire group. The collective energy of the group makes the room a perfect environment for healing. Group healings are a powerful tool that everyone should experience. It is much easier to work with these energies after you have experienced them firsthand in a group session. Although nothing beats physically being in the same room as group healing, you can participate remotely in these healings. These treatments act as an energetic boost to activate your personal transformation in response to your intentions. This group energy treatment can be used for self-improvement, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual. These group treatments are not just for acute illness. 40% of the people attending are healthcare practitioners wanting to learn and experience energy healing. Thousands of people from around the world will join you remotely with each and every workshop healing. Our healing community is truly global.